I didn't have a state medal in high school. I, you know, I tore my ankle the first round of state against the state, end up being the state champ, but I was in the match with him. Um, so I should have medaled probably. I still got recruited to wrestle in college. You know, I wrestled some varsity as a freshman in college at Northwest Missouri State, uh, beat out a kid that came out of Kansas City. But then I came back my sophomore year. I was, you know, weighing about 135. I was benching almost 250. And uh, the coach was like, oh, this is, you had a great summer. You know, I was working out and was feeling good. And they said, well, you're going to 118. And I said, that's 17 pounds. And, you know, I cut when I was in high school. And I said, I'll go to 26. And they said, you're not hearing us. You're on scholarship. You go where we tell you. And I got down to about 122. And 118 was the weight class. And there were some kids that had died around the United States because we were cutting so hard at that time. And I walked out of the room, and eight years, I had nothing to do with wrestling. I didn't go to it, didn't watch it, didn't, I just was burnt out. And then, like I said, I met Keith Puebla at a football conference and uh, got coaching with him, and my passion and fire came back. So I came, I, like I said, I was assistant at Provostown with Puebla, 93, 94, 94, 95, 95, 96, assistant with Joe. And then 96, 97, I was the head coach. And that year, I think we had 12 kids. Provincetown had eight. Um, and then Puebla was leaving. And uh, so our principals and board started talking. They wanted to put cross country in. And so they thought if we did cross country and wrestling, um, give it a trial, try, see how it would work. And uh, they thought I was a good fit for it because I had some you know, time over at Provstown, and with Tampa, had already consolidated with Provstown by then. We're trying to fill 14 weight classes, and I think back then it was 13 weight classes. I needed numbers, I needed bodies, and uh, cross country, they needed numbers. I mean, um, and they wanted to put this in to see, you know, could our programs work, and you know, and I, not to be mean, but it, the kids had no issues with it. The kids, wanted the opportunity to be successful. And that's what the co-op gives us. It doesn't make us successful. It gives us the opportunity. If somebody says, hey, if you co-op, you're going to win, that's no guarantee. But it gave us the opportunity to be successful. And, uh, you know, we've taken and ran with it. You met Derek. He's high energy, and he was not overly thrilled about the co-op. And But he made, you know, he was part of the team. Everybody got along. And at the banquet, he goes, can I speak? And I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> where are we going with this? And he got up there and said, you know, hey, I, when you're my senior year, this is not how I wanted to end it. Was not a fan of this co-op uh, when we started. Um, you know, Erie's our rival, uh, and we, you know, always, that was who we looked to beat each year. So the expectations were, was, I don't know how this is going to go, but by the end of the year, I said this was the best thing to happen to us. Made a lot of good friends. Um, it was nice being competitive. Because we weren't very competitive uh, alone, and that uh, if there was anybody that was not on board with that, they need to. Because I, I at that time thought this was going to be something special, and it turns out it was. It, it's an example of how a program should run with two communities that both love one thing and come together for that sole purpose. So yeah, it was tough in the beginning, but. I think the biggest thing that I could do is, and, and, I, and I believe wholeheartedly in the stuff that I do, any of the kids that come out for my programs became part of my family. We are going to stick together, we're going to support each other, and I really think that's why you know, I've had my success, because people buy in, and communities have bought into what you know, we've done here. Yeah. The thing with wrestling is it's a family. Now, Max the dad. <laughs> <laughs> Laura's been the mom, but I mean, it's just very, it's, it's a family and you, and the wrestling season's long. You're, you're just together all the time. And I feel like him as a coach is somebody who, he's, he's not about the wins and losses. Obviously it's nice to win. And, um, but the neat thing about wrestling is winning isn't always what the score is at the end. Like if your kid learned and you, they figure out what's the really, you know, what makes your kid tick. And I think Mac very much puts a lot of focus on the kids and developing them. 
And it might not be this kid's going to get developed into a state champion, but it might be this kid's going to get developed to be confident to go out for that next tournament or that next match. And if you've ever seen, you know, I know you've seen him in the corner. I don't care whose kid it is. He, he gets, like you said, gets the teary eye and he gets so excited. And like, it, it's like he's the parent. Then he's watching it and he's in it and he wants to see them be successful, whether they win or they've, they've learned so that they can pick up something for that next match. And I always tell the kids I don't like them. That way I don't get attached. Uh, but you know I'm lying. Right. They know I'm lying. Their parents know I'm lying. Because yeah. um, I will go bend over backwards for every kid that comes out to be part of my, my program. And, uh, but I do, I draw a stiff line. You know, I won't beg you. And I will tell you when you're messing up and what you need to do. And, you know, I try to keep them on the right path. He, you know, he believed in family, um, believed in um, uh, everybody has a role. Everybody has a purpose. Um, I remember early on it kind of shaped how my, I coach things. It was like, you know, you can have a great individual stud, but if you go out and your team loses every night, it, you know, it weighs on you. You know, you know, you might have a night where you lose a match and, um, you're, you know, you're pretty hard on yourself. Wrestlers are, uh, but then the team wins. It, it feels pretty good. It's like we're all in this together. We can't be perfect every night. There's going to be losses. I always, you know, wanted to end with the trophy, you know, and we had our opportunities. I mean, the, you know, the year that we drew Porta, you know, our first year at state, they end up winning state. We draw any other team we come home with a trophy. And again, it's just how it works. Um, you know, and then we had uh, Belleville Altoff, yeah. you know, and I think they ended up fourth that year or third. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, and you, just to get there, be one of the eight teams to make it is amazing. He's done just about everything um, and accomplished everything. I, you know, the one thing he always wanted was a state champ, but you know, that is so tough um, to get one of those. I've had one, fortunately. Um, it's just, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but that it, everything he did, he, he, he prepared those kids to get that. It just didn't happen. You can't sustain yourself that long if you're not doing the right things. Um, and especially now with social media and the way things are, you know, people, they criticize everything that you do. Um, the fact that, you know, you, if you believe in something, you stick with it, uh, it shows kind of what he was for our program, consistency. You know, you see the heartbreaks, uh, you know, Justin Hovey was, I think, a three-time state qualifier, um, never got over the hump. My son-in-law, Matt Cole, um, was probably the fourth best kid in state his freshman year, lost at sectionals to the top one, two, three in state, but they, at that time they only took three, so he was an alternate. Uh, um, you know, those are hard things, you know, look back, uh, Remember uh, Matt Erickson not picked to go to state in junior year. He got hot at the right time and reversed the kid with like seconds to go and end up going to state his junior year, didn't make it out his senior year. Um, Adam Rimmer is wrestling a kid uh, his 97, 98, his senior year and got in a scramble and got his arm trapped underneath the kid, just laying on top of the kid, and for 45 seconds, I'm yelling, don't move, don't move. He, don't get your arm back. You're get at the back point. You're going to win the match. Just lay there. And their coach was like, he stole it. Well, <laughs> your kid's on his back. We, but his arm was literally just trapped underneath, and he's laying on top. I mean, and you look at those things, and, you know, but that can happen. Uh, well, you know, I mean, Dylan Binion taking second in state, um, uh, yeah. you know, he, he ended fourth at sectionals. So he was knowing more likely he was going to get the Beltorn kid from Bishop Mack at, at the one spot. The kid from St. Joseph Ogden actually got the one seed because he had a better record because Beltorn must have missed some uh, during the season. And we fell into him and we upset him and then ran our way to the finals and where we met Beltorn and I think we got majored. We've, you know, we've, we've done a lot of good things. Uh, 
a lot of these kids have surprised me a lot. I mean, uh, I, this year, you know, we were expecting 30 to 35 boys and 14, 15 girls, and we ended up with half of that. But the freshmen were going to take some lumps and, and stuff to the point that uh, we, we are wrestling teams and competing. Um, these kids, I'm so proud of these kids. I mean, yes, it was the second losing season I had in 26 years. I think they ended up 14 and 20, um, but they very well have been, could have been 16 or 17 and 17. They were that close to being winning. It just, but, yeah. you know, proud of them. I mean, they, they fought through a lot of adversity. I wasn't sure my son would wrestle. Um, you know, his buddies all played basketball, um, but he did. Um, my daughter, who the year 2008, 2009, 2010, I think we had a pretty good run. Um, but her freshman year, she was a basketball cheerleader. And we didn't have a 106 pounder, or 103 pounder at the time in the room, so I came home on Tuesday night and was giving her crap about it or something, you know, cheerleading not being a real sport and, and all this stuff. And uh, Wednesday, she shows up to practice. So I said, what are you doing? She goes, well, I don't have cheerleading. I said, I'm going to come practice. I said, for what? Well, I'm going to be on the wrestling team. We got going, and you know, we went through practice and got done, and I told her to step out of the room and kept all the kids in the corner, and Adam Volz was one of the captains that year. And uh, I said, well, we're going to have a team meeting, and it must have been the second week or something. But I said, uh, she's willing to come out and support, but my my belief is you start something, you finish something, and she's already committed to basketball cheerleading, so she's only going to be here on the nights that she doesn't have to cheer at basketball games. And uh, I think Volt steps up and says, she just went through practice, didn't complain, didn't miss a beat. If she's going to help us, we want her. So <laughs> come full circle, her senior year, she's got her baby brother, on the team and he beat her out for the varsity spot at the end of the season but she about ripped the doors off leaving I mean she was still part of the team um, but we qualify for state and have them them both on the mat on the team yeah. is probably one of the most special things that I've had trying to teach these kids, you know, wrestling's not just a sport, it's the way life's going to be. Um, you're going to have adversity in life. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up or are you going to, you know, find ways to move forward? You know, I, winning's fun. Losing's not so much fun. But I always count losing as a learning lesson. And that pain, and that's one thing, you know, I always tell the kids, if they have another opportunity the following year, Take what you feel right now and try to make sure that hurt doesn't happen again. What can you do to control that? Is it find the weight room? Is it maybe I should have cut down a weight class? Maybe I should have hit the weights or maybe I should have been in better conditioning. Um, you know, 30 years is a long time. There's been a lot of good memories. Um, there's been some rough times, you know, and when people thought they know more than I did and and that's why a lot of times early on, we tried, I always had the kids ride the bus home because I didn't want them having to listen to the parents. Well, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, or coach told you to do this, and you should have done this. Because sometimes they may have lost, but the team won. They need to relish in that, and then we can rebuild what they need to work on. I don't want them beat up and worrying that this is all on me. And But, you know, I made sure that as we talked, you know, win or lose, we, we talked that we would talk to more tomorrow and, you know, we'll break down things, and we do. Yeah. I, and when, I, I mean, we had IKWF little kids. They started, you know, second grade, third grade. Um, when I was here, I, Tom Hammer was running the program and stuff. And uh, I even branched that out further to the preschool and kindergarten. 
um, because I wanted to make sure that it was ran from the top all the way down. Right. And of course, I was, yeah. uh, I had kids coming. Yeah. I mean, I had my daughter, she wrestled for a while, my son, you know, but I had that, that, you know, I wanted him to have that experience. And so, I mean, we, we still now, um, we do about eight weeks, seven to eight weeks. Um, we do one night for pre-K to first grade. So you're looking at three-year-olds to five and six-year-olds. And then uh, we do two nights a week uh, for second through fourth graders um, with coaches that have been under me or parents that have been under me. And then we pass them over to our junior high, um, which is fifth through eighth grade. And I mean, the numbers this year, I mean, we had 50 pre-K through first graders. We had 35 second through fourth graders. We had 60 fifth through eighth graders. Um, and then, you know, yes, it was a freak year for our numbers, but our high school numbers are usually in the 30s. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, so I think that, that shows other programs and, you know, that people, will, when you are following the directives of the program and bringing it along, because my, my little stuff is fun, fundamentals and fun. I even, that's in my fifth grade, right. sixth grade motto, junior high. Fun, fundamentals, and fun. You gotta keep these kids involved. It's funny because I was anti-wrestling. Like I, my husband wrestled in high school and I used to make fun of it. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And most, a lot of people don't until you like really get into it. And I was like, we're gonna do this. <laughs> like, I guess we're gonna be a wrestling family. And then fell in love, especially like Mac, like the little kids, I mean, that's where it all starts and I think that's why we had a successful program because the the little kids program is just like they love it they love him the older kids mentor them and then they just stick with it and I think that that's where it all starts and that's that's where our journey started with it he is so highly regarded actually even former wrestlers like from when I went to school um, that know him and know of him everywhere you go it's he walks in a room he first of all you all know he lights up a room no matter what uh, but but he's respected he everyone knows he's very fair he's very fun and um he knows his stuff and it's not that he knows necessarily the technical part of wrestling only but he also understands relationships and those relationships with other coaches, the officials, because again, it's one of those sports where you're out there butting heads, but when, once you come off that mat, the respect is there, and he is always very highly respected. He's one of my best friends. He was the best man for my wedding, so um, he has been around. Uh, I student taught for him. Um, you know, so he's mentored me in a lot of in a lot of ways. I've learned a lot from him. When I left, I learned a lot when I was away from him. So, but you know, there's always going to be um, some of his teachings in the way that I kind of handle things. Uh, but um, yeah, he made me love the sport. He does it for the right reasons. We're gonna miss him. One thing I always try to do is I wanted to be the coach in the corner the last time they're on the mat. Um, that way I can talk to them, um, tell them how proud I am of them, um, how, how, I, how it could have been a positive impact on the kids. Yeah. And that's what I tried to do with every day of my life, yeah. making sure that for, because you know, the plaques and, and the stuff I receive, and that's, that's stuff that's yeah. nice, but yeah. that's getting these kids, you know, the videos they sent, or you know, the kids that are now coaching you know, I mean, and there, we got them there and, you know, giving back to the sports, to the community. And I'm tired. Yeah. I think 30 years is a good run. Yeah. And it's time for others to w see what they can do and I'll be watching. Um, but, you know, I just, I wanted to give every kid the opportunity to be at where they thought they were successful. And you know, on some kids making the 20 win board. <laughs> I got kids up there that have a losing record, 20 and 21 or something, but they made the board. They, their goal was to get to 20, and to me, that's better than a state medal.